everyone, I'm Therese with Artista Homestead. Today we're going to be sharing another video on raising chickens on the homestead. These are just introductory videos to a fun topic. Uh, chickens are a great way to add a protein source uh, to the homestead. You can certainly do these on a small scale, homesteading in the city or on a larger scale where you want to really make some earning from it and do it on the large scale farm. Uh, in this video I'm specifically going to be talking about the type of different types of Noisy. Uh, how to choose the right breed for your needs. When I look at birds, I put them into four categories. You have your egg layers, your dual purpose birds, your meat birds, and then also your fancy breeds. I'm not going to talk too much about fancy breeds. Those are ones that are going to be beautiful to look at. They're great for showing, but aren't necessarily the great thing for a homestead where you're looking for a protein like eggs and meat. We don't do much with fancy birds. We've had some here, but overall they have not been a good uh, type of bird for our situation. The other three main ones, the egg, the dual, and the meat birds, those are really kind of your core birds for your homesteading needs. Now, how do you know what you want? Well, if you're looking just to have eggs and you want a lot of them, you want to go with the egg laying breed. These birds, they're... Um, going to put most of their energy into creating eggs, which is wonderful because they lay eggs about every 24 hours. This can give you a decent amount of eggs, um, especially if you even want to consider selling them or things along that line. However, one thing the egg layers are not so good at is that they don't have a big carcass weight if you want to butcher them out. And so when we've been to, done Excuse me, when we have raised birds that are specifically more egg laying breeds, uh, when they get to butcher weight, they've butchered out at around two pounds or so. They tend to be fairly thin birds, um, again, because that energy is going into the eggs instead of their bodies. On the flip side of an egg laying bird, you have your meat birds. Meat birds come in a variety of types. Some of the most common that people often see and what you associate meat birds that you see in the grocery uh, store are your Cornish hens or your Cornish cross. These are birds that are very uh, economically efficient for your pocketbook because they are ready to butcher in five weeks from the time that they are born. They are eaters. They eat, 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 eat. They put on a lot of flesh very quickly, which is wonderful if you want to put meat on your table uh, fast. Now, you don't have to feed them where they eat constantly. You can feed them where you only feed them once a day, which is what we do when we have meat birds. And then that requires them to move around a little bit more and try to forage. Um, a downfall to those types of birds are they do tend to have they do tend to have a weaker legs. Uh, their legs can't support their growing bodies. So they don't tend to be very good foragers, which I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, if you're, that's your more your modern breeds and your crosses. Now you do also have your uh, heritage breed uh, meat birds. These birds are wonderful. Uh, they are going to be able to forage. They can be broody hens. They can have a lot of very fantastic qualities to them. They can be beautiful to look at. They tend to be hardier as well. The caveat to them is that they are going to take longer to get to butcher weight. I have a whole box standing right behind me. You can't see them in the video. They're all wanting to make their own video. Um, so they might take anywhere from, typically for us it's been around 16, 18, even 20 weeks to get them up to butcher weight. However, one of the wonderful things, it takes a long time, but if you have the right climate and if you can get your birds out foraging early enough in the season, they can go out and forage for some of their food, if not all of their food, depending on the breed that you select. I think personally that this is going to give you a healthier bird. I think the animals know how to feed themselves best when given the opportunity um, and they have a lot to forage from as well. So that's a wonderful benefit to them. They also, I think the flesh tastes much better as well, um, you make really delicious stock from those birds and they tend to have a higher dark meat ratio to white meat. Uh, our family likes dark meat. It's kind of who can fight over wants the leg versus the breast in our family. The hybrid birds tend to be more white meat oriented over dark meat. So those are kind of the things to consider. Um, so that's your meat birds. And then in between this, and again, I'm going through this real quick. This is just kind of giving you the, <clears throat> some pointers to know when looking into this. 
in between those two is your dual purpose bird and that's what we use on our homestead these are birds that are <laughs> decent at egg laying they'll probably give you an egg every 36 to 48 hours sometimes more often but i would say that that's probably the average and when you get them to butcher weight which does tend to be longer it can be around 16 to 18 weeks but when you do they still give you a decent carcass weight of around four pounds that's just kind of the average number of what we've seen it can range around three and a half up to five pounds depending on the breed. Um, that's wonderful because we like to raise broody hens. Broody hens are birds that can raise their own young. We have roosters or cocks, depending on what you want to call them. And um, we have a constant new stock of birds coming in every season uh, to replenish our flock. That's great for us. It works really well and the dual purpose allows us to butcher out when necessary to call our flock. And calling is when you take out birds um, that are not needed in your flock for a variety of reasons. And so we can get the meat from them and then still use them for the eggs as well. So those are just kind of the four, what I call categories for your chickens. Now beyond all that, you wanna look into the overall characteristics, uh, the physique of your bird. One of the things to consider is their feathers. Some birds have feathered feet. Now, if you're in a real warm climate, you may want to steer away from birds that have feathered feet. It doesn't mean you have to, but then you might need to provide the correct shelter needed to keep those birds a little bit cooler. If you're also in a real wet climate, you may not want a bird with feathered feet because the moisture can, um, the dirt and stuff will stick to their feathers, make them more soiled, make the nest boxes dirty or things of that nature. In a cool climate though, feathered feet can be wonderful because it can help them stay warmer during the winter months. So that's something with feathers and looking on. Some birds too, there's like a naked neck chicken if you're not familiar. Some birds have more feathers. They're just more plump in general and they tend to be hardier and can handle the colder temperatures. Now, <clears throat> one of my first things I actually look at when I'm looking at the overall characteristics of the bird is the comb. The comb is on the top of the bird. If you're not familiar, that's the red flesh skin that you see on the top. I specifically look at it in your cocks or your roosters. Um, and the reason is, is because it tends to be more prominent in them over your laying heads. They have more, the, the cocks have more color. They're just that more elegant look. Kind of, it tends to be the truth in most species. Um, and so looking at your cocks and comb is really can give a, be a good indicator on whether or not they can handle the cold weather. Uh, there's a whole variety of different types of combs. There's five point, six point. These can be as tall as two inches on the top of the, even taller actually, off the top of the cock's head. You also can have cushion combs. Um, you can also, uh, there's cushion, there's rose, there's pea combs. There's a whole huge variety. And that's all referring to, again, that flesh on the top of the skin. So if you're in a cold climate like we are, we're in Minnesota zone 4, 3B, um, we're looking for roosters and cocks that have a short comb that stays close to their head so they don't get frostbite. There's a lot of things that people do to protect the combs, to keep them from getting frostbite, but my thought is the less input that I need to put into my flock, the better, and I don't wanna be outside before really cold weather taking care of my um, my cocks in that way, like putting Vaseline on them or anything of that nature. Um, so that's something, and also the waddles uh, on, your, on your birds too. You just wanna look for any exposed flesh that can get frostbite if you're in a cold climate. In a warm climate now, sometimes those birds that have, let's say a cushion comb on their heads, they tend to be birds that are better for cold weather climates. And so they don't do quite as well. They may not lay eggs as well or get as much weight on during the hot summer months if you're in a warm climate because it's just not where they're most comfortable. So knowing where your bird's breed comes from, look at the region that it originated out of. Did it come out of the Mediterranean? Did it come out of Asia? Did it come out of um, a more northern climate? That can give you a good indication as to whether the bird is gonna be the right um, type of breed for the, your flock for your homestead. Uh, beyond all that, you have your heritage breed birds and your modern breed birds. Now, most modern breeds birds, in my experience, have been bred for a very spe specific task, and that often is egg laying or meat. Uh, they have a lot of their natural instincts bred out of them because they really are focusing on those two main goals of those two, uh, two products. 
that can be fine in different situations. If you're wanting to go more off-grid or be more sustainable, not having a bird that has all of its natural instincts intact can be a little problematic. For example, in a heritage breed bird, a good one, especially the older breeds, they're going to be naturally good foragers. Foraging is really great because the birds know how to feed themselves and take care of themselves better than ones that don't. All chickens are going to go around and scratch and peck and look for things to eat. That doesn't necessarily mean that they can be sustainable on a system if you're not providing them food. And so that's something to consider. Two, when you have uh, your modern breeds, they don't tend to go uh, broody. Uh, again, this can be a really good benefit. We actually have had it. Uh, in case when we start back here, if you don't know what a broody hen is, that is a hen who knows how to raise her own young. Okay, broodies will sit on nests. They will hatch out their chicks. They will raise those chicks up for a certain amount of time, and the life cycle of your flock goes on and on and on. Uh, broody hens play a wonderful role in the homestead. <laughs> But they can also be a downfall. For a while, we actually had our whole flock going broody on us, and this was really uh, frustrating because they would do it through the whole, all the nice weather. They would start going broody in April, and they would stop in September or October. The problem is, is that when a hen goes broody, they don't lay eggs. They, what they'll do is they'll lay enough eggs to get their clutch. Now, if you're taking their eggs from them, you don't know that they're trying to get their little clutch of eggs for their nest. What they'll do all of a sudden is just stop laying and sit on a nest and not get off. Okay, well, they'll sit there until that broody streak in them gets uh, stopped. And there's different ways to stop. That's another video. Um, but what they'll do is that they will not lay eggs during the time that they would sit on their nest, which is 21 days. And then that's how long it takes for a nest to hatch out. And then after that, until it would, it would be enough time that they would want to wean their chicks, which would be uh, anywhere from two up to probably eight or 10 weeks, depending on the breed. Sometimes then they'll go broody a second time as well. So that's something to consider if you want that characteristic in your flock or not. Uh, one other thing to consider about when you're looking at your birds that you want for your flock is predator issues. Um, some birds are going to be better at observing when predators are nearby. It's really helpful to have a cock in your um, uh, flock. They do a good job of alerting the hens when there are predators. Uh, but something that you may want to stay away from is uh, birds that are crested. Crested birds are ones that have feathers all around their face and on their head. They're beautiful. They tend to be your fancy breeds. They're nice to look at, but one thing that it's really detrimental to them is that they do not have good vision from side to side or up and overhead. So if you have aerial predators or even ground predators that can hide in the brush and stuff, those birds do tend to get picked off very quickly. Uh, they also are not, in my experience, as hardy of a bird. Uh, they've been bred for their looks, not necessarily for their um, hardiness. And so um, we saw some problems, especially in the winter, for them to be able to handle the cold temperatures as well. So that's just a quick down low. I could go on and on. I love talking about breeds of chickens. If you have questions, by all means, put them down below and I will do my best to answer them. If you have thoughts on other videos you'd like us to share on raising chickens, well, tell me. I, I'd love to hear it and give us feedback if you can. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm Teresa with Artista Homestead. Bye-bye.